Welcome to day number 161 live. I'm Eric Rhodes and my guest today is Shuang Lee. Hello, Shuang. Hello. Tell How everybody are you? where you're uh, where you are right now. I'm in the uh San Diego County, California, a um, little bit uh inland. So here is a pretty warm, but today's not bad. It's in the 80s. Yeah. In the 80s. Well, that's all right. Well, it's cold here. I actually have my jacket on. I just got back from town. I went into town this morning for an appointment. And, uh, have, of course, I have to come across the lake because we we are a boat access only. So I've got my, my flannel shirt. I've got my warm jacket. And uh, so feels like September. <laughs> Very different September here yeah. and the, where you are. So today, Schwang is uh, going to be our featured artist at uh, three o'clock, and that is going to be at Streamline Art Video on YouTube or Facebook. And if you're watching for the first time, the way to find it is go to Facebook or YouTube and just search Streamline Art Video. And uh, this is going to be a sample of her video called Fearless Watercolors. And uh, we'll talk more about that later. But uh, what are you going to talk about today? You're going to show us some things. Yeah, so um, after uh, my video uh, was published, I got a, quite a few contact about uh, how I do things uh, when I showed in video. Now, one thing I talked about was a sure mark, how you want to overcome your fear and, uh, and then put a sure mark in as a, a watercolor painter. So people say, we don't know how to do this. Um, can you show us? Because we never thought of the way you hold the brush. Or um, can you teach us Chinese calligraphy so we can do the brush stroke like yours? Uh, actually, then the finally I realized that is about brush work. For some reason, it's a hard, hardly talked about uh, among the watercolor artists. We do talk a lot about techniques. Uh, uh, washes and the splash and the salt and then everything else. But so I thought I'll take a today's opportunity and then talk a little bit about the brushwork and the how I do it. So we'll do a little demo about you know how I actually do this. You don't need a Chinese calligraphy or any of those things to be a watercolor okay. artist. All right. Excellent. All right. So I, I'm gonna uh slip Slip away and do just a couple of announcements, and then I'll be back with you in a minute. All right. So, folks, sure. it's going to be fun. We're going to get to watch Shuang Li paint. So, we'll see you in a minute. All right. Well, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air magazines. We also do newsletters Fine Art Today, Plen Air Today, Realism Today, and wa American Watercolor. I almost said watercolor today. And, and, and of course, we do the figurative art convention, the real, uh, the uh, the plein air convention, and we've had to substitute. We had plein air live, which is a virtual conference. We had a huge number of people on it, and already we've now announced realism live, and that's already got a huge number of people on it. <clears throat> so that's going to be in October. I shouldn't show you that graphic because it's the uh, it's got the uh, August deadline on it, so I won't show it to you, but. We have uh, a lot of different variety and topics, and I think that's really important to understand is that, you know, you'll, we're going to be having uh, a, a lot of different people. Uh, Tony Sirenai is going to be teaching. He's a still life artist. Mark D'Alessio, one of the greatest plein air artists on earth. Uh, Stefan Bauman is going to be teaching on uh, portraiture, I would imagine. Cornelia Herons is going to be teaching. Todd Casey, who is the author of most recent still life book when, and just fantastic still life artist. So you're going to be learning still life, uh, portraiture, right? um, Will, William Schneider, Connor Walton. We are having people from all over the world and Connor Walton is going to be coming, uh, from Ireland, which is going to be nice. Kathy Odom will be doing landscapes, uh, for us, some more impressionistic landscapes. And Kathy Anderson will be doing flowers. Jeff Legg will be doing still life. Daniel Graves from the Great Florence Academy is going to be talking to you. Daniel Gerhardt will be doing portraiture. Victoria Herrera. Uh, Juliet Aristides is going to teach you about drawing. Um, the great Daniel Sprick. Uh, what an honor to have him on board. Joshua Larock, uh, Rose Franson, and last but certainly not least, the great Graydon Parrish, uh, who 
going to be talking to you about, I think about uh, Munsell Color, but I, I've got to confirm that. Anyway, it's called Realism Live, and it will take place in October, and you want to make sure that you become a part of that. If you can't make the dates, you can also watch replays because you get replays with your ticket, and you want to get those. Uh, we have just had to raise the price by $200. Uh, the uh, uh, actually, we, we raised the price by $300, but you're going to be able to get a $200 discount. Uh, you, if you got in before August 30th, you got that $100 discount. Now you can still save $200 if you get in uh, before September 30th. Uh, we have had some technology challenges to be able to serve all these extra people that want to come on board. We already have 1,200 people registered, and it's going to be an international festival of painting. And we're going to paint together. Uh, we will go into what we call breakout rooms, and the breakout rooms will look like this, only they'll be smaller. You'll have uh, some of this will be on, on a new technology we're exploring. Uh, this happens to be a photo from Zoom, but uh, we have cocktail parties at night, and we paint along. We're going to have live models to paint, and then we also have breakout rooms in smaller groups, and so you can get to know people from all over the world. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So that's called Realism live and uh you want to make sure you go to realismlive.com now today i've got some prizes um first off the winner of the value specs is mary mcclellan from halfway oregon she's not all the way she's only halfway but she's halfway to oregon uh mary mcclellan congratulations thumbs up uh, applause for getting value specs today i'm giving away for comments in the comments section a digital subscription to Plen Air magazine, number one selling art magazine in America, according to Barnes and Noble. And the digital has 20% more content in it. And of course, if you want to subscribe, we'd like that. It's at plenairmagazine.com. But of course, you have a chance to win your own digital subscription today. Uh, at three o'clock, I want to remind you, Shuang Li is going to be doing Fearless Waterscapes. And you find that on YouTube or Facebook. And let me show you uh, the video that she's going to be doing part of today. She's going to show you how she did this painting. It was absolutely beautiful, stunning painting. And this is a cover of the video. Of course, we always give discounts on the day we're running these, these, uh, these uh, video samples. And that'll be today at 3 o'clock. And you'll find the discounts in the comments section. Um, a lot of people are asking me all the time, you know, you, you keep talking about stuff that you do. Where can we find it all? Well, we do so much, and we have more on the uh, more in the plan. Uh, but everything from newsletters to products to videos to art instruction videos. To, we have a TV channel now on uh, Amazon, YouTube, Roku uh, called PaintTube. Uh, we have all these different websites. I don't even have them all listed here. We have uh, a Russia trip. We have the Adirondack trip. We have the Fall Color Week, which is taking place this year. Uh, the magazines, the newsletters, the books, the marketing, art marketing in a box, so many other things. So you can find it all at uh, streamlinepublishing.com. That's my business, streamlinepublishing.com, and hit slash everything. If you do that, that's where you find everything. And if you want to sign up to be on our, our, our email list, you can do that there. And that'll give you an opportunity to get the emails that we send out because we send out a lot of different stuff. We we send a lot of emails because we have a lot of stuff. We're always launching new videos. We, we probably, uh, on top of what I'm doing every day here, uh, uh, you know, we're launching 30 full length and full length sometimes is 20, 30 hours, videos, instruction videos, courses, full courses. And we select the very top artists in the world to be streamlined artists. And so we're looking for uh, only the best and we want to provide you with only the best. And so, uh, anyway, that you could go to everything and find out uh, what we're doing. Um, we also, I'm, <clears throat> let's see, I, I forgot to mention a couple of people. I forgot to mention Jean Stern, uh, who is going to be part of, of Realism Live as well. And there's a couple more that have been added or will be added in the next 24, 48 hours. So stay tuned for that. Um, also coming up very, very soon, this is a monumental thing for us, is we did a video with Nikolai Blachin, the great Russian master. I flew to uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Russia, right before COVID uh, with my crew, and, and we also hired crew locally there. And we spent five days with this Russian master doing two videos, one on drawing and one on 
on painting. And the reason this is important is because the, uh, the Russian academies are considered the best schools in the world. Now, we have some really, really great schools, but the Russian academies uh, never paused, right? This was something that was built back when Catherine the Great was around, and they train these people up so well. And the people who teach at these academies are so refined in terms of their ability. Nikolai Blokhin uh, has been teaching at the world famous Repin Academy, part of the Russian system uh, for uh, many, many years. He's no longer teaching. He's out on his own. His paintings are selling for uh, six, seven hundred thousand dollars in the bigger ones. Uh, he's just a, a really important. And so we, we've got a video coming up with him. And I was amazed. I sat there and watched it the whole time. And I, of course, directed the shoot. And I just was so blown away by the technique and the difference in technique from what I was accustomed to and the way that he accomplished certain things. I had never seen these things before. So we're going to have that for you coming up. We also want to mention that this is new. Uh, Plein Air Magazine has just now entered Michael's stores. We think we're, we think we're the only art magazine in Michael's stores. Uh, they sell lots of art books, but uh, this is Plein Air Magazine. It's now in, in 278 stores, so we're really honored about that. If you want to check out Plein Air Magazine, you haven't got one, you can go into Michael's if you don't want to subscribe. Go in, check it out, and of course, we'd appreciate the support. I want to remind you guys also that we have uh, Fall Color Week coming up, and we have a few seats left. We're going to do it live and in person. The only live in-person thing that we've been able to do this year and that's going to be in the White Mountains uh, next month, the 12th through the 19th. The color is starting to change here in the Adirondacks. It's going to be peak color uh, during those dates, we're told, uh, in the White Mountains. And so that's going to be a really great time. We're, of course, going to be patiently socially distancing you and so on. Also, I'm taking a group of painters to Russia. Uh, that's going to be starting Labor Day next year, a year from now. And uh, though I hate to leave the Adirondacks anytime, uh, there's only one place I'd go, and that's Russia. I love Russia so much. And the fall in Russia is beautiful. The people are beautiful. The scenery is beautiful. Uh, the costumes, and then of course the paintings. We've got. Uh, we're going to take you and see the the originals, the original uh, paintings from the great masters in Russia. And we're going to tour the cities. We're going to paint the cities and the and the old countryside. It's going to be a lot of fun. So. You go to paintrussia.com to learn more about that. I'm only taking 50 people, and we don't have the pricing up yet. I've been trying to get that done, and quite frankly, it's in my inbox, and I just got to get it done. Uh, lest I not forget, the Plein Air Convention is coming up in Colorado. It will, it will be live and in person, assuming it's allowed to happen. Of course, all of our events right now, you get a 100% money-back guarantee if you or we have to cancel because, quite frankly, uh, we know that it's it's risky sometimes. We don't know what it's going to look like back in 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 May. But uh, anyway, come to the Plein Air Convention. That'll be a lot of fun. So uh, that's my announcements for today. And now we have Shuang Li. Hello, Shuang. Welcome back. Hello. Uh, how's the angle? Uh, the angle is great. We're going to be able to see it pretty well. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get. Yeah, I can see you a little bit now. Uh, so okay. Shuang. No, I want to see you. I want to be able to uh, talk to you okay. for a minute. Um, you and I met where? Uh, actually, that's the, the little thing I wanted to use today. We met 2017 at your Full Color Week in yeah, Maine, so which is a so fantastic one. Tell everybody about Full Color Week from your perspective. Uh, you know, if you love paint, you don't want uh, to see other things, just paint. That's the event you want to go. You got in other words, no, no workshop, yeah. no instruction. And uh, I had uh, so much fun. Uh, one day, um, we all just got up and uh, go out and uh, paint, and then come home and eat, and then, then uh, have another uh, session somewhere if you still have energy. Or, you know, hear the music, or play with the friends, and then uh, go to sleep, and then the, it's another day. So you got a full week to do this, and it's just so much fun. I just couldn't believe it. I'm so glad I went. Made a um, lot of friends, too. 
Yeah, met a lot of friends. And then when we come back, we still have the circle there uh, on Facebook. And then once in a while, we still, you know, uh, see each other. And there's so many uh, good artists were there, um, yeah. pro or amateur. And uh, I just love the, the, um, the whole environment that, it, you know, you just think about art, nothing else. You just yeah. think about a paint, nothing else. Well, it's even wonderful. as a professional, even as a professional, you know, who paints a lot, sometimes we don't get to paint outdoors all the time. And I'm, I'm not a professional, really. I mean, I have some work in galleries. But for me to paint five days in a row, two or three paintings a day really makes a huge difference. Uh, by the end of that week, I'm really painting much better. Absolutely. Um one day we painted from 5.30 till 6.30 p.m. Okay, 5.30 a.m. till 6.30 p.m. Right. So that's the way that if you wanted to be a serious painter, that's the way to go. Yeah, now not everybody has to get up that early, but some people do. They want to get up and catch the sunrise. So what do you have to show me there? So this is actually the little piece that uh, I did when I was there. I think it's called Northeast Harbor. Um, yes. um, so uh, the, I wanted to talk about the brushwork today. Um, if you even in this little piece, what I try to do is use proper brushwork for different areas, and then I get this painting done. Um, when it's uh, uh, quick, fresh, and interesting. So how do you define the brushwork? Uh, brushwork, it's a little bit more complicated in watercolor than um, in oil and the uh, acrylic painting. So I paint all those uh, uh, and even gouache in the past. But um, in watercolor, I think the way you hold the brush, the way you hold a different type of a brush with different pressure or different direction, you apply that paint with different consistency. All these come to be a uh, part of the brushwork and it's a lot more sensitive than you apply the paints on canvas or uh, a board. So uh -huh. that's why I guess People, it's hard to give one conclusion, say you do this way and your brushwork will work. But uh, here uh, we have a very soft brush, um, brush strokes, and we have the razor sharp lines there, and uh, uh, somewhere in between, and then they use the other techniques, but it's as a one larger shape. So that's how uh, the, the watercolor uh, brush work should be um, the best master is you can uh, take a look at uh, John Sinner Sargent's watercolor compared to his oils. It's a similar, but it's full with visual energy. Uh -huh. So, yeah, go okay. ahead. Um, so, I wanted to use this one as a um, little sample. Why don't you um, put it on? Can you put it on the left? Because we'll be able to see it on the left. But there we yeah. go. Yeah. Well, we yeah. can't see it all, but maybe when we, sh we show you off camera a little bit more, we'll be able to see it. Good. Thank you for yeah. that. I will move oh. around. So uh, there's we a have viewers um, from Saudi Arabia, The Hague in the Netherlands, <laughs> Canada. Wow. Okay, so quick, uh, quickly go over about the brush types. I think I did also in my video, but a little bit because we're going to talk about brush, what we'll talk about. I don't care about brands that much, but I do care about the type of brushes, uh, which is a little bit confusing in the watercolor world. So there are, I category them as a natural hair to brush, which mainly I use those for uh, like a mop size, or uh, this this one is called oval, or some place called a cat tongue. So it looks like a, a cat's tongue. Okay. Yeah. So these are natural hair, either Kalinsky or Sabo or whatever. Uh, actually, this is a synthetic, but they made it so soft that you cannot even tell. So those, the ones that hold a lot of liquids. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so I use those for the softer textures um, to do this, not just only wash. Uh, but my main body of the brushes are, I use synthetic uh, round brush. So these are not a called, mainly not a called round. It's called a mop or something else. But I use these as the synthetic one. Um, uh oh, oh, I'll pick it up. Synthetic brush. Um, as are those a raw synthetic brush. watercolor brushes? Uh, yeah, this actually is categorized as a water media brush in the, this little red, black. Uh, uh, and this is a um, Escoda, that's a watercolor brush. Okay, mm -hmm. it's all very similar. Um, that's why I'm saying you don't want to really worry about a brand. You want to worry about the, the, the texture, the way that, that they bounce back or how much water and the pigments they hold in these uh, brushes. By comparison, these hold a little less water because they are skinnier compared to these. So those I use to build my main body. Let me pick up those things. So like uh, the trees and the rocks and all these solid shapes that you want people to see, these are the brushes I use to make it work. Okay. So those are like a major uh, brushes I use. All right. Uh, I use one brush to do many things, not like a, okay fan brush for the br uh, for the uh, leaves or a rigger brush for the uh, twigs. I use one good brush if it has a good tip, a good size, and then I use it, you know, twist and round, and I use it sideways and so on and so forth to uh, create um, the shape, the texture, the color I want. And then I can use this way to make it a very economic brush stroke, which means it's a fewer brush strokes on the paper. Right. Okay. So that's a two. That's about the brushes, and then the third one is easy. So I use some very cheap ones, and some from Michaels. So I use these just to lift. Well, you can use any other type of brushes to paint, but these are definitely doesn't really hold much paint or water. So I use those to lift the paints if I need it. Okay. So that's uh, what I do. So let me do a little. Um, and here are the um, the paintings I've done. So you see the different brushes works here. Um, the the soft and. Uh, Majority, 99% of the whites are left. Um, basically, I painted the soft blue parts. And you see the hard edge of the uh, brush work, which is use uh, those synthetic brushes to create the, the shapes. Okay? So that's how these things are done. Common question always asked, can you show us how to draw straight lines? But if you get it closer, it's not that straight. So I'm just creating the pattern and use the tip of a good brush, and then the, it gives the illusion that's very straight, which is not. Well, and you, so, want, you, you really want your lines broken up anyway, right? Because you, if, if it's too straight, it'll draw the eye a little bit too much. Exactly. And the when you have everything else soft, this one automatically become a very straight and sharp. Just cheat on our eyes. Yeah. Can you tell everybody what kind of paper you're using? Okay, I uh, normally use arches, uh, rough, or cold press. When it goes smaller, I tend to use a cold press. And today's is arches, 140 pound rough. All right. Okay. So now can you see the whole of this? Can't see the whole thing, but most of it. Okay. That's okay. Uh, That's okay. okay. So I'm going to demonstrate on this one pretty much just to show you, uh, not exactly the same one, but I'll just show you how I do those brush uh, works. I usually start with the soft uh, uh, natural hair brush, and I tend to use this one a lot to do the uh, sky and- Can you show us your, your uh, tin with your watercolors real quickly so we can see, at least see your palette? Or can you sho shove it a little bit to the, Closer to the edge. 
Okay, terrific. So do you use uh, the, do you, do you, it looks like you use tube watercolor and you, you squirt it in, is that right? Yes, I use tube watercolor and uh, uh, the brand I use actually is a local, it's a California uh, made. Um, uh, it's Da Vinci paint. Um, okay. Very good, um, but they, they need you probably, they do terrible marketing. Um, so that's well. Maybe the maybe they'll hear you say that and they'll start uh, doing some good marketing. Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> they have been that way for years. Yeah. Um, okay. So, as I said, the brushwork you uh, you can't explore yourself. Uh, each person, uh, you know, tended to hold their brush different. But what I do is I start with the pigment, the mixture in my brush, and the paper is dry. So I think I want some blue sky, and then I want the rest to just look like some clouds. So that's what I would usually do. i just push this one. Uh, I usually paint a little flatter, um, not as this one. So you see, it's already brush work by me. <laughs> And that eventually will become, a, you know, everybody's personality's uh, signature, you know, in those. And when that, it's happening quickly. Um, I just leave some whites and touch upon, and I see I'm using the full body of my brush. Twist, and then um, so I got this one done in no time. Okay. What took then, you so Took, took us three seconds. Okay, so now <laughs> here is a very blue. Um, uh, so I'm pushing a little bit of blue in, but with each of those, it needs a fresh energy from you as an artist. So right. we don't want a little dab, 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 you know, that that will ruin uh, the watercolor. Um, I used to paint uh, oil and aquatic. Now, uh, if you want me ask ask me if you want to go back, I probably would say no, because you see how easy paint the whole sky was um, water and the watercolor. Um, for oil, you have to paint the whole thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So now it's done, and the, this part it doesn't really matter. We'll put the darker shape on that. Okay. And you see the brush uh, work here is dry, wet, and somewhere in between or mixed together. So you got a lot of different edges going on there. Right. So that's the edge um, that, you know, um, we don't, for some reason, I have a, a little problem with all hard edges watercolor painting. I admire people who can do that, but I just can't. No, those edges, the hard edges, bothers me. I want something to be soft in there, something to be hard or you know, has a rough texture in there. Uh -huh. All right, so now move on to, let's see, I'm doing a little bit, um, pulling down to the water part. Okay, so uh, just try out, okay? So let's see, okay, that's about right. And I don't want to touch the top yet. Now your head's blocking a little of that. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now, I, yeah. So now two or three brush strokes. See how big, you know, brush. I'm just pushing it with that. Okay. And then you got that. And the one it's there. So this, uh, I'm using a pretty soft uh, brush. Still, the first one as I used uh, was a sky. You can use the other soft hair uh, brush too. The whole reason for using soft natural hair brush here is because the texture, the nature of this water is soft. Okay, at least in this painting. So I don't want to introduce too much hard edges. So I'm just going on, connect a little bit, and this brush. That's the work. A little angle. And a little more. Oh, too much. And here we go. 
And I, you see, I'm adding this on the go, uh, the little brush work that's a hint of ripple in the water, but I don't want to say too much, okay? And I skipped a little, so I decided that those skip things might be interesting. That's a part of the brush work, so I'm just going to keep it. But you don't want to too much of it because it's going to, dis, um, to be very um, disruptive to the other main body of this. Somebody okay. in the comments says that Shuang Li is a great instructor. Well, of course she <laughs> is. We, we only pick great instructors. Well, of course. <laughs> of course. Erica tested me before. <laughs> OK, so now you see soft. And it's the contrast that you see the little sky texture there. And here is a pretty soft. Yeah. In this one, I don't want to emphasize that. Now it comes back to um, this part. That's the major shape. So I'm switching to my group of uh, synthetic uh, brushes. These brushes are a little harder. Uh, when I paint, my painting is pretty much, I. Let's put it this way. I use my brush, look like I'm drawing. When I'm drawing, I'm actually using my pencil as, as a brush. So it's the same to me, okay? Okay, so I'm just looking at here. We need a lot of uh, pigment, but not in this way, okay? I wanted something to be seen. Uh, it's also dark, and I want a little bit of drier pigment. So let me mix the mixture first. So dark first and the cool will break. And in the in the middle there will be some warmth. So I'm going to charge some warm colors in there uh, once I have the main shape. You see it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm mixing something that looks very dark, but eventually, you know, when it's put there, uh, it's not going to, to appear to be that dark. And it's ter it's not a terribly mixed. I don't use a brush to do it this way. It's roughly mixed, but you can still see the cool, warm, and, you know, different variations there. Right. right. So we don't know right or wrong, so there is no really uh, accuracy per se, as I said in my uh, video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give a big test. Okay. And here, the, the brush stroke starts. Okay. Okay, we're we're blocking just, it. You're blocking it a little bit. There we go. Okay. I need to cut my head off. <laughs> well, that, that would probably defeat the purpose. <laughs> So now, um, so you really, at this point, you really don't need it to worry too much. I'm just putting some larger brush strokes in there. And now you see I'm using my full, uh, the full body of the brush, pushing it down. And the, tra the pressure on the paper, and it creates some interesting texture there. So I will see if I wanted to get rid of some. Um, I, I, I not, like how you'll you'll reach into one piece of the, what you've already painted to pull pull some paint in. Yeah. So now uh, on the go, I'm just getting some uh, pure color directly from my uh, palette. And see, nice. Yeah, I'm switching my brush to be uh, for the tipping part to make some tip of the evergreen train to be seen. So this way. And remember, you don't have to make it a straight. You know, there's some bigger ones. All right. Now, uh, make uh, something. Do remember we were in full color a week. It's a lot of a color. So now it can charge in because it's still wet. And here is a little one. So you see, I'm using one brush. This is a size number 10 uh, yeah. round. And I'm just using it to do various things for me. 
Okay. Um, if you just use, I see many students just use the tip of the brush, you know, how many brush strokes you have to do to make this shape, it's a lot. Right. So it's a better, uh, it's much more economy and much more fresh by doing this way. Okay. Now, maybe touch. Now I'm bringing the whole uh, brush body over there again, just uh, 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 add a water, keep some texture. Is that the hot press paper is that cold press paper? It's a rough. That's the rough, okay. It's the rough. Well, you can use, uh, well, I use cold uh, press as well. So cold press is a little smoother, but I don't use a hot press. I cannot use it. Some people love it. So it depends on um, how you, your personal preference. It's nothing right or wrong. Okay. I'm using that. So this part actually is supposed to be the mat. So let's see. I can do that. You just got a great compliment. Somebody, Elaine says, Zhuangli is the perfect person to convert someone to watercolors. I might have to try it after watching her lovely demo. Ah, thank you. So I I give up on my aquatic or well, I still paint some, but uh, uh, really watercolor is a thing to go. Love it. Now I'm coming to the land. Okay. Um, Still use the side of a brush. So this is a part of the brush work. I'm using the side, but I'm anchoring the lens into here. Uh, let's change it. Different, yeah, different value. Uh, How do you so present your work? Do you float it with without a mat? Is the paper edge uh, showing? Do you put it in frames? What do you do? Yeah, I do both. I do okay. both okay. Uh, because some places they insist you have to have a mat, uh, but uh, I'm lazy, right? Um, so I do put in, um, I like these uh, mainly oil painting frames. Um, so I'm anchoring these to make those as uh, rocks. Okay, so I leave some here for later. And this is the part eh, I didn't really plan well. So let's say uh, these are some different uh, vegetations. So you see, I'm just softening it up. There we go. Done. In three seconds. What took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> Why take me so long to do it? Uh, one year in the, in uh in a, a plein air competition, um, I had a lot of uh, oil painting buddies. Uh, we were painting this uh, similar thing at the, uh, one location. So after I finished the three, three pretty good size, 12 by 18 uh, size, they were still working on like a you know six by eight. It's like, hey, what's wrong with you? Oh, you should have been a watercolor. <laughs> uh, so fast. Somebody okay, asked, so do you coat the finished yeah. product with wax? No, I don't do it. Uh, because I just I just find that those are tedious <laughs> uh, work. And uh, again, the watercolor organization, there are so many so many places they don't like they don't like you to do wax they don't like you to do this and then that so it yeah. becomes like a so much a headache but you do a lot of painting on location outdoors yes right it's also a hassle if you think that you're doing the uh you know plain air painting outdoors and especially in the composition and uh, you know competition then you have to wax your painting no way you can do it okay so i'm adding uh, some suggested rocks here and you see i use the side way of my brush push it down and the leave some i'm adding some darkness in there I don't know whether it's right or wrong but i don't really care okay 
And you see the edges of this, and the way I push my uh, brush um, down to make this brush work happen, make it a suggestive rocks, okay? And by the way, the rocks are not always wrong, okay? Sometimes you can't even pinch, paint, pinch pink rocks, it still work. On you your work. If you're putting it in a plein air frame, do you put it in glass or do you do something else? Uh, I put in, uh, if allowed, I put in uh, ref non-reflective um, pixel glass with a spacer if there's no mat. I see. Okay. Uh, New Zealand is watching. Hello, Hazel in New Zealand. Hello. Well, Schwang, you're going to get invitations to all over the world after this, you know. Uh, thank you. Between, between YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, everything, we're getting about a total of 5,000 views a day on average. So by the time the replay, so no pressure. So I'm now switching to the tip, okay, to add a little bit of a vertical lines to pretend that those are tree trunks. So nothing about accuracy, but if you can convince people with your brush work, that's how everything goes. Yeah. Okay. So now you see we got 80% of these done. Uh, nothing is accurate. <laughs> nothing is totally straight, uh, but the shapes are there. Um, so, and I used entirely for this whole group, I used the entirely uh, one brush, yeah. size 10, but it just twists and turns. So, so that's how um, I'd like to do, uh, you know, keep everything uh, fresh. And sometimes, yeah, it's a little bit of rough, but uh, I think all, all people came to me, they always ask, how can I paint loose? Nobody said, can you teach me how to paint tight? So that that's already said that we don't need it. So I think I think that we I don't I don't know if this is I don't want to make a blanket statement, but I think oftentimes we we start out thinking tight is the way we want to paint because we have these perceptions that it's about you know making something that represents the photograph, and I think that takes us a while to get get away from that and realize how much how much different it can be and and more pleasing in some ways. I mean I. I, I, there are a lot of tight painters I love, and there's also a lot of loose painters I love. I like to do both. Yeah. Um, you know, the um, painting, something look like something, I guess that's how we all start, you know, uh, learning how to paint. So that time, uh, you know, the brushwork is after that. But afterwards, uh, when you come to a certain uh, stage, then you realize, um, the good brushwork actually makes your painting not only fresh, but eventually that's how you build your personal style. And that's the next stage of a painting. Okay, do so- a, Do you ever use a spritz, a, a, you know, spray of water on your paintings like this? Uh, sometimes I do if it's uh, painting outdoors that's, um, too dry. Uh, where I live is a little bit of inland of, uh, uh, it's 30 minutes from uh, ocean, but can get a zero humidity uh, during certain seasons. So I do yeah. spray. Yeah. Somebody's asking uh, that there's now a lot of artists, watercolor artists who are using a UV coating and then just putting it in a, um, putting it in a plein air frame. Do you ever do that or how do you feel about it? Um, I don't do it. It's the same reason. And then there will people think about it. Okay, whatever you put on, it changes the character of watercolor. It become because you put a chemical on it, and there's uh, they category that into something. I thought all oh, these are. I I pretty much don't listen to those. But I just don't like. I like to concentrate on painting sure. itself. Instead of using chemicals, that's my okay. attitude. I got people watching from France and from England. Wow! Now. Wow! 
Okay, so now I think I just realized I missed something. So uh, see, you see the back here? Yeah. I was thinking that one. So that should be uh, first time put it in there, but uh, oh, add a little bit. So you see, I'm back to my soft haired brush, the yeah. little mark. So now, because I don't need the background to jump out, so I'm just putting something in there. Uh, beautiful. Now oh. it's there. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not a connected, right? So a uh, little bit of more when it's still wet. And then uh, you see at the, this stage, you can, when it, it's a soft, you wanted to make sure it's a soft, but it's not a boringly soft as a one color. You always have something in there. Maybe there's a little in there. Uh, and you can use the horizon point. line. It looks like it wants to drip, but it's kind of holding itself there. Yeah, so hopefully it will stay, but it's even drip. Don't worry about it. This is okay. why I said in my video, say fearless. Even if it's a drop, you just use the you know, tissue to stop it. But most of the time, it will beautifully dry over there and uh, form something that it, it's not a painted. It's a wonderful the foothill or whatever in the distance right. looks like you, you know, spend hours painting that. <laughs> so that's the beauty of a watercolor is, is a or painting by itself and creating some magic. Yeah. So now I see the only thing left is the, uh, there in the original painting, there is a jetty, um, I guess. I can just do that with a little smaller brush. We can go with size uh, six or size eight. I can use size eight. So the good thing about these synthetic brushes, you see how long and sharp these are. Yeah. That's my my uh, pick for a good brush. So I just make it some. For you. Since you're putting yeah. tube paint in your palette, do you put it out fresh each time, or do you let it dry and then keep using it? Okay, I don't let it dry. So the secret of this is okay, folks. Put first to put a lots of paint in there. Okay, you see how full these. Of course, I yeah. added some. Okay, don't just be frugal. Put a little bit in there. It's going to evaporate and dry a lot faster. So put a lot in. Sit there, and I have this thing dirty. Sorry, this is a piece of sponge. I used it for my painting to get rid of excessive water. And this one holds water uh, when it's in the palette, it keeps the paints moist. So that's two things. Okay. So now it's feared as a straight line. No, there's no straight line. So it's this. So you see the brush work I'm doing just very, and that's me. It's just like your, you know, uh, credit card. Um, signing signature. I'm just doing this um, for the sake of a variety and then make something more interesting maybe in there. And that's time you can you know add a little um, reflection underneath it. See so all use the tip darker paints and one two there is don't do this. Okay if you hold the brush this way try to draw in line, it's just look awful. Okay, loosen it up, use the tip, and then, then use that. And this is, I may not need this, but it's a time to finish up. Okay, so now the last thing. We are almost over, right? Yep, yep. The last thing I wanted to just show you, the third category of the brush, hey, okay, is these. If you want some highlights, uh, let's say in here, I need a one or two. So that's how I do it. Get it wet, dry it up, use the sideways to get. So you're pulling paint out, yeah. Yes. Okay. I don't use these to paint, but 
the cheaper, the better. Uh, <laughs> well, not really. I, I bought it uh, from Michael's uh, that I think it's something like eight bucks. You get a 10 different brushes in size or flat. Okay. So that's the way to do it. Well, of course, sometimes I use my finger, sorry. Not, not really ladies' behavior, but. <laughs> but you can use, you can do this lifting uh, on the rocks if it's dark enough. But remember, when it's even lifting, it's also the uh, the brush work. So try to be sure. Do a sure mark. You see, everything here is a sure mark instead of uh, tapping or wishy washy. So that's uh, pretty much. It That's about cool. the brushwork. So I would say right. explore, you know, find your own sets of brushwork and then let, put on to your watercolor, see how it works and watch my video. All right. Well, why don't you come back on screen so we can see you? All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. great. All right. Well, this has been, um, this has been fascinating. Everybody's loving this. Come over a little bit closer because I can't see you. Okay. There, there it's we okay. go. There we Good. go. Good. Okay. Yeah. So, so applause and thumbs up. Zhuang Li, you did awesome today. You're going to be on at three o'clock on the video and uh, everybody should watch that at three o'clock um, or, uh, and, and go there. They can get a discount on your video today only. So thank you for doing this. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you broke up yeah. a little bit. Oh, I did. I broke up. Okay. Well, maybe a bad internet here. Okay. Well, Shuang Li, thank you so much. We might be frozen. Yeah. Somehow, Hello? I don't know. You saw it's breaking up. Okay. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Well, I hope I'm not breaking up, but I can't tell really because I'm here. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was Shuang Li. And today she's going to be on at three o'clock. She's going to be showing you uh, how she did this painting. Uh, and she's got other painting demos in her in her video, but this is called Fearless Waterscapes and, and painting water and uh, making it fearless. So that's something you'll want to see today at three o'clock and you can find that at Lily Art Video. Um, I, I, you can find the video at lilyartvideo.com or if you want to uh, see or do a segment of it live today at 3 p.m. Uh, it's at um, YouTube or Facebook uh, on Streamline Art Video. Just search Streamline Art Video. All right. So what I should tell you, by the way, is uh, we're at about 65, 68,000 on YouTube. We want to get up to 100,000. If you're not a subscriber on YouTube, we would appreciate it if you do that. There is a button right, right there. If you're watching on YouTube, press that button right there, and that will subscribe you. And that way, these things will come to you automatically because uh, you don't know when you're going to miss them, right? You might have just stumbled into this. Also, uh, if you follow us on Facebook at Streamline Art Video or at me, Eric Rhodes, uh, that would be helpful. I want to tell you guys also that uh, something cool, and Shuang Li doesn't even know this yet. I don't think she knows yet. But uh, we're going to be doing an event called Watercolor Live. And it's going to be in January of 2020. Up oh, 21. Sorry about that. I messed that up. I, I guess 2020 is the year that disappeared. Anyway, January 21. And uh, it, it, we don't have any of the details up there yet. We're about to announce faculty. We've got about 10 amazing people signed up so far. And it's going to be watercolor live. And it will be very much like our other plein air live and our realism live. This will be all watercolor. And the reason we're doing this is because typically at our conferences, we have a separate stage for watercolorists. And we weren't able to do that using the technology that we used last time around and this time around. So. Uh, we're doing something special just for watercolor folks. And so it'll be all forms of water media to be watercolor, gouache, et cetera. Um, and, and so you'll want to uh, want to go there and get your name in there so that when we contact people about it, you will be contacted. All right. 
And so that's all there is there, but you can put your name in there and that'll be good. Um, also, I uh, want to remind you that if you want uh, her video, Shuang Lee's video, just search Shuang Lee at lilypubs.com or lilyartvideo.com. Either one will work for you. Uh, and her website is Shuang Lee Watercolors. And I do love to own one of her paintings. I'm sure she'd probably figure out how to make that happen. Uh, I, ha I happen to own some, so I'm really happy about that. Um, also, uh, if you want to learn about all the stuff that I've got to offer, it's ericrhodes.com. And that's where you can find everything. And then, of course, we also have, as I mentioned, we have a site, uh, streamlineartvideo.com or streamlinepublishing.com slash everything. And that's where you can find everything we do. And there's a lot of stuff that, quite frankly, isn't there yet. I got to get that fixed. But, uh, and there's a lot more stuff coming. So we have lots of things happening. A reminder that Realism Live is going to take place as well, and that's going to take place October 20th through 24th, and that will be some of the greatest uh, realists alive, Dan Sprick, Joshua LaRock, Rose Franson, Graydon Parrish, just amazing painters and uh, different subjects, right? So figure painting, portrait painting, uh, still life painting, flower painting, landscape painting. It's going to be a, a huge event. We've already got 1,200 people signed up, so we hope you'll sign up as well. And remember, sign up before the 30th of September, and you'll save $200, right? Price just went up. Thank you for watching today. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plant Air Magazine. Remember, the, the name of the game here is don't let all the stuff going on in the world completely rock your world. You are an adult. If you're watching this, I assume you are. Maybe you're not. But... You're an adult and you have control over your emotions and how you react to things. And we want to react in a positive way, keep ourselves positive, keep our families positive, keep our self feeling good about ourselves. So if you sit around and you doom scroll or you sit around and you doom the news, it, it is just not going to be healthy for you. <clears throat> Get informed and then leave it alone and focus on keeping yourself upbeat and happy and do things for yourself and, and do the things you love. Get your exercise, get your dopamine going and paint. Well, love painting. Try painting if you've never painted. Learn to paint. Watch these videos. We've had people who said they've been transformed just by watching this every day because their painting is changing. And then you join an event like Realism Live, you'll be transformed even further. So thank you again for watching. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine live from the Adirondack Mountains of upstate New York, hopefully for another 30 days if it doesn't get too cold because we don't have heat. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.